one from, here's Little Birdie Spring. I've answered your questions before. Very, you have good questions. She says, hi Lee, thank you for graciously answering my questions. I was surprised that more nomads don't winter in Tucson. The reason they don't is because there's no BLM land around here. Like if they go to Yuma, but there's a lot of BLM land around. They go to Quartzsite, but there's a lot of BLM land around. There's not a lot of BLM land around Tucson. There just isn't. Um, so that's why. Your city seems quite lovely, and I can see why you enjoy it. I do. Do the nomads who use BLM land have safety concerns or health concerns like the dust you mentioned? Well, I don't think so. It's not as bad as I make it sound. I don't think it's as bad as I make it sound. I personally just don't like it. If you've been with me a while, you know the one thing you've gotten on my personality is that I'm, I like neatness and cleanliness. If you're living out on BLM in Arizona, you're going to be dealing with dust. You're going to be dealing with uh, powdered dirt. You're not going to be dealing with, like when I camp up um, in, in Flagstaff, I mean, you're dealing with dirt and grass and there's usually a bed of because they got so many pines, they got the ponderosa pines up there. You're dealing with that and you can bring that in. But when you're dealing in Arizona, you're dealing with dust. And if there's on um, BLM land, especially in Arizona, it's overused. So they've really pounded it down. Like it's almost like being um, Char in Charlie Brown um, peanuts. You know, the little, when he, when that guy with the dirt, when he walked it, you could see the dirt. Well, that's why it is walking in some of the BLM land. You just can see the dust as you're, as you put your foot down, you can see dust coming up. Yeah. I don't like that. I really don't. I don't want dust in my van. I really don't. Um, it just, yeah, it's not my cup of tea. So, but some people don't mind that. They really don't mind it. So do they have concerns on their, on their health? I doubt it. I mean, I don't know. Does it get in their lungs? Maybe, maybe. Um, are prices for items like food, gas, gym, etc., higher in Quartzsite and Yuma because of the influx of travelers this time of year? Uh huh. Oh my gosh, yes. In Quartzsite, the veggies, trying to get veggies and all the all the um, food products, they're like double, three times. Yeah, yeah. But what a lot of people do is they go if they're in Quartzsite, they'll drive thirty minutes to Parker, and um, and there's a big Walmart there. So yeah. Do the nomads choose these destinations for the social aspect or out of tradition? Probably both. Probably both. I mean, had not the circumstances happened with um, my relationship breaking up, I probably would have gone to courtside, but I didn't want to go there uh, this year. I, I'm, no, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want a lot of people getting, because I really get recognized there. And I didn't want a lot of people asking questions. I did. No, I wanted to be here by myself with my family and my friends here. That's all I wanted. Yeah, so they go for, I would have went for the tradition. I'll probably go next year for the tradition and, um, and social. If you're a new nomad, you need to go to Quartzsite. I mean, you just do. Um, my friend, um, Kathy Ferguson, she uh, finally got her van. She finally got going. She finally, she was telling me along the trip, she was saying, I, I made it here. I made it here. I made it here. Well, she went to Quartzsite and I'm telling you, she was just uh, letting me know. I met a group, great group of gals. We're going to travel together. So this is how it works. This is how it works, everybody. That's why I say go to Quartzsite if you knew. And then she said, are the crowds overwhelming? Here's what can get overwhelming for somebody like me, um, who's in like a minivan or something, is that everybody's there. You've got people who just, they have their homes in back east and they're now in their class A's, they, they own class A's or whatever, or fifth wheels, and they head on to Arizona and they spend their winters in Arizona. And then when it starts getting warmer, they travel back and they 
store their RVs. You know, they've got a good retirement, pensions, and they can do this. Their children are grown. But what happens is, is they overwhelm the little guys. Um, I actually heard a report. Somebody told me this. I mean, I believe it's true. I don't think it happens exactly like this all the time. But this guy had a tent. I mean, there are people in tents out there. They just want the simple life. Um, I don't know if they're full-time nomads, but they definitely are enjoying being out there. And they just want to enjoy the outdoors and look at the mountains and the quiet. And he woke up and there was a class A. His tent was here. There was a class A that butted up right there uh, pretty close to him. I find that to be extremely rude. It, that that was horrible. And yeah, they, they, they'll... They surround, they basically, this group of class A's surrounded this poor guy. And it, it makes you move. The second year I went to courtside, I didn't even put up my tent anymore. Because I knew during the, the height of the, of the big rush, like the last two weeks of January and the first couple weeks of February, I didn't even put my tent up. Because I knew that I was going to move almost every day. I would find a place to park and then somehow <clears throat> a new class C or whatever and they run their generators. Well, I don't go out to on BLM land to suck in somebody's carbon monoxide from their generators and, and listen to it. You know, uh, uh. <laughs> that's what they do. They just uh, run, it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And then I gotta, I gotta smell the fumes. So I would just move to another place. And then if somebody pulled in there or I realized, whoops, they got generators too. I just moved. That that year I moved a whole bunch of times. I just moved here, moved there, moved there. Yeah, I just moved a lot. So, yeah. Um, is that overwhelming? It can be, yeah. Uh, our second meetup that we had the second year. No, the first year we had the meetup. We had sectioned off this place, this area. Paul and I sectioned off this area. Well, all of a sudden, we were near this one area, whereas they said, we've been coming here for years in the same spot. And I really hate to say the name because I know that not everybody that owns up Montana, they're supposed to, they're both, they're supposed to be like the one of the better um, fifth wheels. It was like a Montana um, sales parking lot they were like they just kept moving in and <laughs> they actually blocked off this one area to drive out oh man yeah it was it was um uh, that's a, that's reality and we anybody in in coming um for my meetup we had we had like um vans uh, minivans, things like that. We didn't have the big motor homes, but they moved in and they were just right over there from us. So that's where the overwhelming part comes in. So good questions. Good questions. Was that it then? Um, sorry for, uh, no, I love the questions. Bring them on. Anybody, if you want to ask me a question, please ask it. I mean, because then I know what you want to know from me. You know, because that's why you're watching me. You want information or you want to just be entertained. And I'm, I'm happy to do that. You know, give you some good graphics. Give you some uh, decent music to look at. And give you some information. And just show you what I do day by day by day. I've been in a minivan for um, seven years now. And I don't see it ending anytime soon. I think one of the questions was, what what was another question here? Let's see. Right here. This is from Nomadica. Hi Lee, great content. So my question would be, do you plan on being a minivan nomad until you can't do it anymore health wise? And then what's the plan after that? Well, yes, I plan to do this as long as I want to. And I think that's a long time because my goal is to not make a landlord rich. You know what I mean? Um, I just, yeah, I don't, they don't always treat us well. 
they're trying to make a buck and I understand they really are just trying to make a dollar. They're trying to, um, this is their income. If they own property, this, this helps supplement maybe working and, and getting them up in a higher echelon of income. Well, I have found in the past that they don't always take care of their tenants. I'm not saying all landlords are horrible. I'm really not. I just had usually what happens with me over the years is eventually the roof leaks. <laughs> eventually it does. And they don't, because that's a really big expense and they put it off to the very end. They just do. Here in Arizona, we don't have much of the pipe of the spite or the peaked um, roofs. We have more adobe roofs. And what happens is water sits in there and then eventually there becomes a soft spot. And they leak. It's just the way it is in Arizona. And they leak. And, it, it, you know, it's thousand and probably now, my goodness, it's a lot more expensive. I would rather um, just live because I'm happy in here. You all know. I did have somebody say, if you look like, especially when I have my hair and my ponytail, she, you say, you look like you, you got, in, I dream a genie. You got her type of a, 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 a setup in here. <laughs> I mean this little bottle yes oh please somebody rub the bottle let me out of here yeah so I love I love my home here I love it I just love it here so I plan on being in a minivan um, for a very long time do you do I think that I will get like a pro master or I'm gonna say, I really doubt it I don't need to stand up I don't need to stand up here I can go outside and stand up. I don't need to be walking around in my minivan. I am I am snug in, in a minivan. I can park anywhere I want to. It's very stealthy. I'm very happy in a minivan and they're eco economical. But what is my plan when I can't? I don't know, I suppose get a place, you know? Get a place or I'll be contact. Okay, okay kids, I got four of them. Who wants me? <laughs> I would really hate that. I mean, maybe I would live with my daughter, you know. Um, maybe I would. I mean, my son, my son has thus changed um, companies. Um, he's making twice the money now, so maybe I will go. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a chemical engineer. He's a, he's a smarty pants, yeah. And um, my daughter is a nurse practitioner, so yeah. Uh, making the bucks they can take care of their mom oh <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, they're probably listening to this yeah I'll, I'll tell them hey watch the video watch this video you know I got plans and it involves you you know <laughs> I don't know if I want to live with my kids but I suppose at some point I plan on living a very long time I really do so I'll probably eventually get a place and I would still I'm, I'm just going to keep doing videos so I'll tell you that right now because even in a place, I, um, I have so uh, many ideas for really good videos. And I would have even have better lighting, wouldn't I? Yeah. About once a day, I get out of my van and kind of organize things. I usually shake out my towels that I've been sitting on and... Today, I need to reorganize my sunglasses. I've been wearing the same sunglasses day after day when I have so many. <laughs> so I want to get in there and kind of do some exchanging of sunglasses. But it's basically a clean out and it's just a time when I can get some organization done. It's just that today, it's sunglass day. recently had a couple nice days and every year when I'm in Tucson at the park I get to watch the firemen 
the new recruits practice. Practice getting on the ladder, practice climbing up, and it's, it's fun to watch. And so I wanted to record it. And if you find this interesting, just stay with me for about five minutes and you'll get to see what they do. I find this kind of thing fascinating. And when I get a chance to record it, I like to bring it to you. So enjoy. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, this has been fun, hasn't it? Okay, so please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Yes. And please go to minivanlee.com. I've got neck gaiters. I've got jewelry. I've got exercise videos. You know spring's coming, girls. Yeah, and guys. And I've got... Um, and then on Amazon, Amazon, type in Minivan Lee. I've got the book. How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. It's a good organizational book for anybody. It's got lots of lists on there. And what else do I got? I think that's it. I just, I'll be here tomorrow. Will you? I know you will. I love you. Bye. Bye.